that's to me something that I'm not very aware of what actually goes on. So looking, we'll look at say your, the PhD, cause that's obviously probably the, the Holy grail, or it's the largest part of that kind of process to, yeah. to going into postdoc research. Yeah. What would you say were the, the highlights and the lowlights of that time and that research? How much time do you have, Jesse? We could be here for a while. <laughs> no, um, I think what what you what you say what you said about you know not really knowing what research is like um, is very very prominent even up to now, and it's something I'm quite passionate about trying to um, get people to understand a bit more. Because I think I wish I could understand a little bit more about research when I was in undergrad. Because there's there's a lot of different types of research. I feel like when we talk about research. Um, and I'll, I'll go into my own experiences in a sec, but I just wanted to cover when we talk about research, a lot of the time, the default is thinking about, oh, going into that lab space and running experiments, you know, chemicals, pipettes, safety glasses, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But there's actually a lot more to research in the sense that you also have a lot of more clinical and qualitative based research, you know, policies, um, questionnaires, looking at trends. Um, bioinformatics now it's huge you know there's, there's a lot of what we call dry lab um, research that happens in and around the universities um, and I wish that was something that I was made a little bit more aware of in my undergrad um, because I think through all throughout my undergrad my idea of research has always been like the wet lab you are stuck in the lab doing things kind of right. kind of research um, so yeah I think all throughout my honors and definitely my PhD uh, there are way too many highlights and lowlights, especially in the PhD. If you were to ask any PhD student, if any one of them says that they were happy the entire way, they are 100% lying. There is no chance. <laughs> um, especially in the second year. The second year is what we call like the PhD blues. It's just second year blues. Um, it's rough. Things aren't working. You feel like you're making no headway in your project. Uh, so there, there are a lot of the times where, like I said earlier, you know, you're sort of going into experiments, doing them, getting the results. And then when you analyze them, or even when you're getting the results, you realize that something has gone wrong and mm -hmm. you have no idea why, and you've just wasted an entire day. Um, so that was always very frustrating. Um, and just make it's because it's such a long process, right? When you do a PhD, you know, it took me four years. Uh, yep. They say it takes three years, but most people, you know, take three to four years at the minimum. Yep. Um, because it's such a long process, you don't really see how everything comes together until the very end. So at the start, it can get quite demotivating when you feel like you're not going anywhere. And that's not everyone's experience. Some people mm -hmm. are really, you know, they have fantastic PhDs. They're publishing amazingly. Um, they're, they're getting great results. Everything seems to make sense. And when you hear stories like that, and then you think of your own research being like, oh, why didn't anything work? And that was my experience. My entire honors year, like not, I, I couldn't really get any positive data, still did really well. Um, and that's something that people have to be aware of in research. Just because you, your experiment doesn't work doesn't mean that you're making bad research. It just means right. that you're taking a longer step to get there. Yep. Anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, so when you get to that point where you're looking at someone else and they're doing amazingly, you know, they're publishing, they're getting great results and you yourself are not, it makes you feel very imposter syndrome-y and like, oh, what am I doing here? Nothing's going right. And though, no, most of the lowlights from my PhD um, was definitely to do with that and just being frustrated that, you know, things aren't working, you're wasting all this, no, okay, I'm gonna say wasting, you're using all this time to- And it's not leading to the result. Yeah, yeah. And you know, I mean, Unfortunately, that is the scientific process. You know, you do something, it doesn't work. You try and figure out why, change something, go back and do it again. So, you know, a lot of the lowlights, for me at least, reflected and revolved around that lack of progress. Um, and I think I'm someone who just need that bit of validation to say that, oh, things are actually working and, um, you know, I've got something going on, right? Right. So that was that was rough, but, you know, the highlights have definitely been quite a lot as well because research isn't just about being in the lab. I don't think I got as many opportunities as I would have liked. Um, and it's definitely true for people in the more recent years to go mm -hmm. to conferences. Um, I was lucky enough to go to at least one conference a year, uh, but they were just national conferences within Australia or within Victoria even. 
um, but some people get to go international and present. And um, you know, it's it's nice to be able to present to an international audience because then you get a bit more feedback uh, about your research. You talk to people. You could end up collaborating, and it's also just nice getting a little bit of a holiday. You know, going somewhere else and yeah, it, it's a nice. It's all, it's all paid for too, isn't it? Those yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. some sometimes you have to find funding for it, but um, right. yeah. most times it's pretty good. Yeah. Um. So you know, a lot of my highlights have to do with meeting other researchers and then mm. you know you sort of talk about the science i love talking about science uh we had a day where our lab and another lab went away and we discussed just you know where our research was taking us the big picture kind of stuff why mm. it was important and there were some really really good discussions from that so i really enjoyed actually talking the science and discussing why things are the way they are um, so that, that was always really fun. And you do do a lot of cool techniques, you know, you're, I'm playing with very expensive equipment, like my PhD, and I'm sure we'll cover this a little bit later, but, um, my work did, a, uh, used a lot of microscopy. So I used some really fancy, expensive microscopes, um, that did some really, really cool imaging. And, you know, once you get the end result of it, you're like, okay, this is, this is very cool. Like to imagine looking at a cell move, you know, that's, that kind of experience is really nice it's very niche yeah mm -hmm. i can't really see that being used in a you know real world practical example like you're not going to use a microscope every every now and then but yeah. just at that time when you're working through those techniques it's it's a real privilege to sort of see the type of work and understanding um mm -hmm. 